So guys, our assignment on impulse and momentum change. So you have your two equations here. You have uh, the change in momentum, m times the change in speed, which is delta v, equals the force times time, or change in time. Now, if they ask you just to solve for impulse, we can say, okay, impulse is force times time, or capital I is force times time, and these are the units. Momentum change, or momentum, is kilograms times meters per second, and the impulse is newtons times seconds. So we can have those here. So for the impulse, this is the equation we're gonna use. So this is how I would ask y'all to do it. All right, you would write underneath, I is equal to force times time, and then put the guys in. Force was six newtons, time was five, and that equals 30 newton seconds. Now, in this one, they ask, what does the change in momentum produce? Well, guess what? Uh, the change in momentum is equal to the impulse, right? We, we, we looked at that in the video, in the Ed Pauls. We talked a little bit about it yesterday and in, even in that um, guy right there. So if you know what the impulse is, you know exactly what the change in momentum is. You didn't, there's no math involved. It's literally going to be 30, except you use a new unit. You use this unit here, the kg meters per second. So how did I do the little dot thing? I literally went up top here. All right, I went up top right over here. I copied this thing. And uh, I, I just, yeah, used that and I pasted it here. So now they want us to calculate the change in velocity of the object. So we have the equation written for us. So I'm going to rewrite the equation. I copy and pasted it. So delta V is equal to the force times time divided by the mass. So then we're just going to punch in the numbers. Force was 6. Time was 5. Mass was 1.5. And the dash should equal 20, I believe. Let's see. Right, is 30 divided by 1 and a half? 20. And the unit for velocity will be meters per second. Oh. Got it? What? Don't you worry. Okay. So now that we got this one, let's move on to the next one. They want us to solve for time. Now normally, again, I gave you the equation, is your change of momentum is equal to the impulse, and I rearranged it to solve for T. So if I wanted T, divide both sides by F. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the mass times your change in velocity, which is given, and then divide it by the force. So if this is the equation, you're going to plop in the numbers. Did I not do it over here? No? All right, so then let's just run through it. So what was my mass and velocity? The mass was what? Two. And the change in speed was five. And what was the force? Eight. So we got what? 10 divided by eight, 1.25. And what would the unit be for time? Seconds. Hell yeah. Easy, easy, easy. All right. 
Now, three and four, you're given, again, the, the equation. You've got to just put everybody in the right spot. Force times time divided by the change in speed or change in velocity. Um, mass times delta V over time. Same thing over here. All right, velocity we measure in meters per second, time in seconds, mass in kilograms, and force in newtons. So then let's scoot, scoot, scoot. Number seven. So let's do this one. We got cot one. We want to calculate the, uh, the, the momentum. So P equals M times V. Bless you. Bless you. So what was that? What would that be? Mass is two kilograms times 30 meters per second. So that has 60. What is the unit for momentum? Kilogram meters per second. Uh, so I'm going all the way back up to the top real quick. I'm highlighting that unit, copying it, bringing it down. Dope. Then I can do cart two. Same thing, P equals mass times velocity, which is going to equal, what is the mass of cart two? 1.5, and the velocity or speed here is 40, and that should equal 60. Now, number eight, um, you're given the mass of the golf ball, you're given the time that it's in contact, and you're given the change in speed. So you have everything there to complete it. Now, in this one, though, okay, so we have a billiard ball. Um, so you guys like play that phone game, the pool game. Yeah? You ever play that pool game on your cell phone? Like you can challenge, you can challenge each other. So if you needed like a shot, right, to – it has to hit the wall. It's going to hit the wall with a certain speed, and then it's going to come bounce back off. Well, because this one is just moving to the left, we're going to say it's got negative. So it's just basically, okay, it's moving to the left at 20, and now it's going to be hitting off and moving to the right at 18. So we want to find out the change in momentum. So we're going to use this equation. All right. Mass is equal to, or change in momentum is going to be the mass times our change in speed. Well, what's our change in speed? Well, let's see. What was the mass? 0 0.2. So the final velocity would be what? 18 or the negative 20? The 18, because it's the one that's coming off the wall. Now, what was the initial velocity? Negative 20. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. Negative 20. And so this becomes 18 plus 20. So it's uh, 38. And then we're going to multiply that by 0.2. And that is going to give us an answer here of 7.6. And what was my unit again? Kilograms times meters per second. <laughs> Now, number 10 and 11, are, are, they're, they're like the same thing for each other. So we can do one of them together, and then you can do the final guy on your own. So for part A, very simple. They give you a mass, and it's telling you what it's traveling at initially. It's four meters per second. So very simple. P equals MV, which equals... Three times four, which is 12, and the unit 
kilogram meters per second. Okay, so if that is the case, this is what this is how much momentum. Right, think about it again, like the example I used yesterday. Get it, like a kid on a little um, sitting on a toy car kind of thing. All right, someone gave him a push, so they have this velocity, and let's just say three kilograms. All right, obviously the mass is a little bit different, but we're just going off of the idea because I think it's easy to picture in our heads. So they're, they have an initial push, so now they're on a, on a smooth surface. This is what they're moving at. Okay. When it says a 5 Newton force acts on the object for 1.8 seconds, so that means basically if there was another person standing in the middle, all right, and as the kid's coming by, now they're going to apply a 5 Newton push to the kid for 1.8 seconds, creating an impulse which causes there to be a change in momentum. So obviously the kid's mass isn't going to change, so what would change? The speed, right? So that additional push would cause them to speed up. So what we're going to do first is you find the change in momentum, and then you're going to add it to your final answer. So I copy this dude here. So we're doing 5 times 1.8. Nine. So we got nine, and the unit for that is Newton seconds. But guess what? Newton seconds and kilogram time meters per second are equivalent to each other. All right, because impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So I'm just going to make that a little side note. So obviously when you have a force times a time, it's newtons times seconds as your – why did I have not the nine here? Did I not forget the nine? Nine newton seconds is our one dude, and so that's our impulse. So impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So essentially we're saying, okay, the change in momentum is going to be nine kilogram meters per second. So I wrote in parentheses, find the change in momentum – and then add it to the final. So what is the new total momentum? 21. Okay, so your P initial plus your change is going to give us our final. So you're going to take our answer from part A and our answer from part B to get our final piece here of kilogram meters per second. All right, guys, that make, does that make – are we able to understand that? So if we're picturing that, someone's being pushed. They have a certain momentum. There's an additional force that kind of pushes them again. Now, let's, let's say it's a frictionless environment, so they're not slowing down. All right, so they're moving at a constant 4 meters per second. They are getting a push of 5 newtons for 1.8 seconds. That's going to cause their what to increase? Speed. And since momentum is pretty much mass times speed or mass times velocity, if the speed increases, so does momentum. So if it, I'm saying like, okay, well, the kid's coming at me originally with 12, all right, kilogram meters per second, 12 momentum, all right? It has a momentum of 12. It's coming at me. If I give him a push for a certain period of time in the same direction it was already going, now it's going to have more momentum. Why? Because I just applied an impulse on it to increase, help increase the speed. So now what is it? New, what is the new final momentum? It's 21. Why? Because I took the original that I was moving at. I basically helped by pushing for 5 newtons of 1.8 seconds, so I added 9 units worth of uh, momentum to it. So our total now after that would be 21. So you would do the same thing for part B. Oh, shit. Except force is negative. 
So your 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 change momentum should be negative for this one. So it will the the final momentum should be less than it is in part A. The final momentum should be less than it is in part A because so that is basically saying, okay, someone pushed the object to me, and then I kind of like put my hand out a little bit to slow them down. I stopped them a little bit, not stop, but I, I slowed them down a little bit because they're going too fast. And now let's find what that new momentum is. So you guys, all right, we did one. And two together, you have to do three, four, five, six, eight, and eleven. So three, four, five, six, eight, and eleven. So you have six problems. They all have the equation there, so you just need to do the work for it. And then the last one is going to be very, very similar to this guy. All right. 